Why, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Voice of the Rings. I'm your hosting guide, Zolnar Chilled as always. This is a Rise to War Legacy playlist, and I welcome back again our friend and guest, Jethros, to the channel. And today we're going to do something fun, which some of you have asked for in the past, actually. But this was Jethro's idea. We did all the work. We spent an hour and a half setting this all up. We made a tier list for you guys. So we're going to go through good units. So we're not going to do neutral. Right, Jethro's, we're not gonna do evil units. We're gonna go through the good tier units. So, and we're only gonna do tier three and four, right, units. We're not gonna worry about right. the one and twos. So everyone knows that. So basically what you're gonna be really aiming to use for mid game and end game. So uh, let me bring it up here. So uh, tier list, boop. All right, there it is on the screen. Jethro, so you can see it too. We're good, all right. So let's start it up. Um, should we just start with this first one right here? Cataphrax. Do, do you want to preface by saying what oh, the yes. tier list is for? That, that's an excellent idea. Why don't I let you do that? Okay. <laughs> that's so, a great idea. Go for it. Um, my, my plan for this list was basically going to be um, we can talk about how useful they are in in PvP. Right? So specifically for PvP, we can do some honorable mentions here and there, like why you might use something in PvE, but generally this is going to be focused on how good something is for PvP. It's going to consider the resources spent to conscript those units. So if something's really expensive uh, and there's something slightly cheap or a lot cheaper than it, but only slightly worse, then usually that will be a little bit better um, because this is PVP focused and we all know how it's pretty lame when you run out of resources. So you want to use them efficiently. Um, also, um, we're just doing the good um, units, like you said, but not the, the neutral units that are good. Um, hopefully we could do those in another video and mm -hmm. uh, and this is going to be considering PvP on a mixed server not in a role playing so it's going to be in a non role playing server um, because uh, one of the benefits of this is talking about um, how useful they are overall for all types of commanders in general so because this is more focused on how good the unit is on its own mm -hmm. and uh, then we can talk about mo something that's purely situational. Well, we have a list for that. Then we have useless things. We have a spot for that. So you can see yeah. the tiers. Needs buffs, situational only, fine, but there's better options. Then we have meta, and maybe needs a nerf. Okay. Mm -hmm. So And these are our opinions, obviously. I'm mm -hmm. sure everyone's going to have their opinions. own. Leave always your comments. Disclosure. Yeah, but... I mean, my we... opinion's never wrong, but these no, are opinions. No, no. Jethro's... I always go to Jethro's because... Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Jethro's, I'm like, I'm not confused. Okay. I'm like, Jethro's, I'm sure you've tested this. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> and usually he has an answer for me, like 90% of the time. So, um, so anyway, let's go through it. We'll talk about, let's talk about cataphracts first, where we should put them. And again, guys, remember, like Jethro said, this is not going to be for RP servers, right? Role playing. This is really going to be focusing on PvP for, you know, Kings of Men game mode or any of the ones that use stuff we're also not going to be talking about uh, elite training with the units here right? right that's another thing just keep that we're not even going to go into that in this yeah, video because it only applies to one specific campaign it's so. yes if you guys want a video on that you need to leave a comment and then maybe in the future we'll make one sure. all right so let's do it let's go over um i'm gonna let jethro he's gonna kind of he's got most of the skills memorized again we can bring them up here in the back the games in the back as you can see but um We'll go start with cataphracts. So, what do you think cataphracts are? And I'll get you do your input, and then I'll give my little tiny input at the end. <laughs> what um, what I think. So, cataphracts are very tanky units. They're very good against uh, melee damage. As you know, they get a fifteen percent damage reduction from all melee unit. That's not just physical. That also includes if mm -hmm. it's elemental damage that's done by a melee um, unit. Also, uh, they get 10% from being mounted, as all mounted units do, um, which makes them able to have the total of 25% damage reduction from melee and 10% from, from other sources. So, uh, you know, they're not specifically um, meant to mitigate physical damage, which makes them uniquely useful. And that's why if I were to give my personal opinion, I would say that they are the definition of a meta unit. Mm -hmm. um, they're good all around in almost every situation um, and basically they're still tanky because they have tons of armor even if they don't get attacked by a melee unit if they get hit by ranged units which are mostly all physical almost all 
Um, yeah. And so that is going to still reduce a lot of damage. So they're they're great, and they have tons of health, and they're only a tier three. So as far as tanks go, they're really they're really excellent and useful. And they have the movement speed because they're mounted. So yeah, uh, you know that helps with your quick your marching in PvP and and things like that. So. All right. So and I would agree with that assessment entirely. We're both going to get our little bit of inputs here. Jastros does a lot of the testing, so he's going to get the he'll give you the explanations more. But I also agree with that entirely because they're strong. <laughs> they're really good. You see them constantly too. So definitely A tier meta. I don't think they're overpowered. That's why you said A tier, right? Too. It's yeah. not it. They don't need a nerf. They're they're very balanced, but they're just all around strong, good mm -hmm. units. So um, I'm gonna bring up Jethro's. I'll bring up the image in the back. Okay. I'll, I'll put it down and bring it up so you can talk about them. So um, just so you know, I'll have that open in the back so you won't be able to see that. But let's go ahead and talk about the, if I have it, of course, the um, Cavaliers, right? So let's talk about that. What do you think about Cavaliers? Where All right. So Cavaliers are interesting because they are a mounted unit, which obviously gives them mounted. So 10% damage reduction is great um their other ability gives them bonus for their very first instance of damage uh what's cool about it is that if they're stunned or if something has avoidance then that doesn't count as triggering its use um oh, cause it's the so first use. but madness okay. does count as triggering its use so whenever it actually gets the damage through gets the damage out um it's good but it's only one instance it's not for the first round right here so, i'm charge you know, yeah. it's good in some ways that it's pretty resilient that you get to keep that strong boost because it does do plus 50% damage on that first mm -hmm. hit. Uh, but when you consider the fact that other abilities um, last for an entire round or, um, you know, the duration yeah. of a fight, it is a one hit thing. And there's uh, hasn't been a very strong way to uh, make that one hit be insane where it hits anything like what a lot of other commanders can do with other units. Yeah. Um, so what I would say about it is probably my opinion is they're fine, but there are better options. Mm, um, that's I would where I would. They're about a B tier because you really want, they are men and a lot of uh, commanders on the good side benefit from using men and get a lot of boost to men from the nobility skill mm -hmm. or from the coalition skill that will help to increase their damage output. Uh, but I've never seen them. They're expensive. Get, Right, yeah, like, they're a like little bit hard defensive. Hard to conscript. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, they're so. they're expensive. Yeah, that's what you said. Expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for cav for uh, cavalry, they are so squishy that it kind of hurts when you when you use those. You need something to kind of keep them safe. And the fact that they're a melee unit, they kind of tend to get targeted first. Yeah, yeah, so. and I totally agree. So we're gonna put them in B. Yeah. All right, cavalry B. And again, to like, yeah, it's. Uh, Guys, Jethros has this all memorized. He's not looking at the screen that we were just looking at. <laughs> With the damages, you were saying everything correct. That's pretty good. All right, so excellent. So that's a good one to cover there. Let's do the Bow Knights, which I would immediately say are probably better than Cavaliers, but as a horse <laughs> unit. But go ahead yeah, and cover what you think about it. If you want to compare Bow Knights to Cavaliers, the main thing to keep into consideration is what commander you're going to use. A lot of commanders uh, benefit for for men, and so the Cavaliers can do more damage, but they're not as safe. Mm -hmm. Since the Bow Knights are ranged units, you can somewhat force other melee units that are tankier to take most of the damage on behalf of the Bow Knights without even needing a taunt. And so because of that, they tend to be a little bit better um, and deal more damage out over the course of a fight just because they don't themselves mm -hmm. get hit as often. Um, they're yeah. very useful for destroying trolls, which are very meta for a lot of evil commanders. Um, but I think it does seem like the PvP meta has shaped up to and where... And Mumakil. Uh, yeah, they're great yeah. against Mumakil. War chariots, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so any large unit is going to get 50%. They're going to get 50% extra damage against a large unit. But and it's every round, which is... Yes, time, and it lasts. It lasts great. every round, which is yeah. which is very good. So by comparison, considering that, it's good. But it is based on situation, and a lot of people use uh, tanky front lines, and it doesn't seem to be that most people use orcs. I'm sorry, that use trolls as often anymore. Mm -hmm. um, the mama kills. It's great for taking out uh, single stack mama kills, but sometimes it's hard to know 
what you're dealing with but now that we have the scout you know ability it's kind of cool that you can make the choices and so because of that and because there are so many um things uh theodins um out there and things that give bonuses like Gandalf the white to your mounted units um i'd say it's 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 above cavaliers i do think that they're not quite meta right now though i don't mm, think that they show a strong in the showing in PvP. yeah i know that's a hard one yeah and thing is for me i use them constantly so like i would tend to be like oh they're more like meta but again you're right when i look at other people's armies i don't see it i don't see it put into groups constantly like right. where where you see all these other things especially mm -hmm. in the kings of men game mode like that's right. really important which honestly they might actually be better in this game mode because everyone has war chariots that's using war chariots that's true mm -hmm. but i had that they same don't thought. but they don't work against a lamroth knight i mean so yeah the yeah. swan knights that doesn't do any extra damage to them and yeah. they're so tanky the bow knights barely can do anything so to them. i mean it's like it's hard because like you'd almost want to say it's situational only with c but it's almost situational only right in b well in our little here's the other thing i will say is that if this was going to consider more of the pve then they would definitely be meta because every the reason everybody has these and even uses them in pvp is because they have a lot left over from taking tiles lots of tiles have trolls mm. um when you're trying to attack them and there are a lot of neutral camps that you want to take that take a ton of extra damage from them yeah so, but if, since this is pvp i would consider them fine but there are better options yeah so just put them in b i i agree with that yeah i think that's that's about where i would put it with our little ranking system we have here so all right into b boop all right so ram riders let's talk <laughs> about ram riders now i love ram riders <laughs> of course i'm a dwarf i love ram riders uh honestly i just like them because i think they're cool looking but where would we put them into our tier list um here i'll say something first about them so ram riders i again like i i mean i think that these honestly are probably in a similar boat as the bow knights in my opinion just for the fact that they're very good but they are slower right than other but they work with mounted heroes right they're very going to be good with mounted heroes um their ability their trample ability on hit uh, enemy uh target right uh defense is down one round so if it's a one stack army that's awesome because they're always going to have if he gets hit they don't have dodge mm -hmm. or something they're going to get 50 percent you know defenses down which is really really good um that's why i run them with my gimli because it just gives another opportunity to make Gimli do more damage. So um, I definitely think they're good. And not to mention, they do have the fire resistance. But like we were talking about this, Jethros. So I'll tell people what we were talking about. But uh, the fire resistance, they remember when they originally gave the fire resistance to all the dwarf units, it was 50%. And then they nerfed it and they put it down to 20%. I feel that they nerfed it too much. I think that it should have been probably like a 30%. At, at right now after the nerf i don't think they should have taken 30 percent off the 50 i think it was too much i think it should be like a 20 percent reduction but um that's just my view because on one unit we'll talk about later on their evil reviews which we're not talking about now but alchemists they're they're a little busted right <laughs> <laughs> not that that's important right now but again these are a good counter if you're fighting someone that's using with pirates or alchemists on the evil side right so it is more of a situational thing I think the Ram Riders. Mm -hmm. So, so what do you think, Jethros? Go ahead and put your input on the Ram Riders. What do you think? Personally, about the Ram I see a lot of versatility in them as a unit. They're very yeah. useful not only for increasing your own army's extra damage, but also increasing your commander's damage. Most commanders that dish out like massive amounts, like over two hundred thousand damage, are usually dealing physical damage. Mm -hmm. And there's some that do focus in, in other types of damage, but they don't usually get much over the 200,000 mark even with some of the best gear but you have yes. uh gimli's you have aragorn you have um both versions of aragorn do a ton of damage mm -hmm. and you have like even haldirs and and uh Far farmir that kind of do a mixed type of damage um and they benefit a lot from having that that damage reduction and the way to actually get the most out of the unit is to have units that attack after they trigger that that defense down so that way you get that extra boost right from the first round. Otherwise you skip that extra damage on that first round. Um, yeah. Also, um, 
they're they're pretty beefy but usually once your main tanks like your cataphracts or maybe your sword knights or, or yeah. guardians like uh are gone and if they're all that's left you usually get decimated so mm -hmm. they're in a weird spot but because i think that they really help increase your damage and you just throw in like 500 of them like in a march it's usually gonna help uh help out more than having those 500 extra units of whatever your main damage dealer is yeah so i kind of think that i tend towards meta because you can use them in an army and you can use them with a lot of damage dealing commanders true um but i do agree with your assessment of what they did with the fire damage uh reduction i i think that that probably could have stayed a little bit stronger and perhaps they could have tried to adjust things in, in a different way because uh i think that that should be stronger on um uh, on other units and mm -hmm. but this unit was already had a place and i don't think it needed necessarily that so anyways we'll yeah. get to that when we get to the other dwarf units so. yeah yeah definitely yeah i agree and you know as a side note i was thinking with our um with our wording of things i'm kind of curious should we have put in finer better options to c and situational as b <laughs> i'm thinking about the flipping uh, those two because, and, yeah. like, lowering the bar, like, C not being necessarily a bad unit. You know what I mean? Just letting D be the more needs buff unit. You know what I mean? Changing yeah. the bar a little bit instead of it being right in the middle. Yeah. I don't know. Well, the way I saw it is with the, when we said situational only, I kind of thought to myself, like, Rarely you would used. only use them in a specific situation. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, they'd, yeah. they'd be worse than, like, things that are fine. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. I totally, yeah, I agree. All right, sweet. We won't touch that. Um, so we're thinking meta, which I I do think, because I see them a lot. Like they get yeah. thrown in in groups of five hundred. I mean, a lot considering that, that evil thing. units, evil commanders use them as well. Like uh, Lurch, yeah. for example, it just seems like they're they're really useful yeah. and versatile. And that extra really twenty percent fire mitigation is just icing on the cake for them. When mm -hmm. they added it, I was like, man, that unit's going to be broken. And then <laughs> I think the problem is they nerfed that ability because that unit, this specific unit was so useful. But the yeah. other units that they put it on, I think it would have been fine. To keep, maybe they should have. We'll maybe they should have let Guardians keep 40% or something. You know, like, I'll, I'll, yeah. All right, yeah. well, let's get, let's get into it. Should we just go straight to Guardians right now since we're on the subject? Uh, sure. Let's Why don't we rate Guardians. the Guardians? All right. Guardians, where should they go? Uh, all right well <laughs> you you go ahead and start with this one well okay the guardians have uh shielding which basically has a 50 percent chance to reduce physical damage by like 20 percent, or is it 20 percent chance to reduce physical damage by 50 percent um, it is let me get it up here for everybody it's something it's, weird uh, like that 50 percent chance to re negate 20 percent physical damage 20 percent. yeah so or receive less yeah so they have that then they have the the heat proof right less, which, uh heat proof yep that's 20 percent fire and damage distance, and then laceration which applies a damage over time right uh does, yeah did, additional 20 percent physical damage continuous for one yeah. round it says rounds yeah <laughs> yeah so it's a weird wording unfortunately there are some things that are great about it like the pure tankiness of this unit is really great they have a mm -hmm. ton of armor they have a decent health pool they're cheap um, but <laughs> compared they're to very horses. cheap uh they do yeah. cost quite a bit of of they're easier to right? script like yes metal yes food so, and metal is actually rather high yeah but they are really good units overall i i think um i think that what i would do to balance things out a little bit would be to increase the percent reduction on them by uh for heat proof um mm -hmm. but then also um re maybe reduce the or remove the extra bonus damage that they get because it's kind of a weird laceration thing. Yeah. you know the laceration is it kind is of weird because it doesn't really do much you can accomplish almost the same thing uh by just increasing their actual damage and yeah. just there's nothing else that's special that it triggers in the game that i'm aware of i used to think like oh this would be great on a retaliate build because it would apply every time they hit back, but that's not true. It doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It only applies when you do a regular attack and not when you do a, a respond. Auto I'm trying attack. to think, are there evil, is there an evil commander that uses bleeds? Well, there are a lot of bleed effects, but that's not even a bleed. It's just yeah. phys physical continuous damage. Yeah. The way true. bleed works is that every time you hit something, it takes extra damage. 
True. Um, yeah. And every time you hit him with physical damage. So yeah. you could maybe pair it with a bleed mechanic, and then it could potentially trigger extra on that. But the bleed mechanics are really weak in the game right now. I feel mm -hmm. like overall, I'm not super impressed with them. And I've been happy to test them this season, and I did a lot. Yeah. They're kind of cool, but they're almost ne negligible. I I do. definitely like after talking. Yeah, I I would definitely personally think more situational because for me it was with Gimli. I usually use them because he needs someone that can survive as long as possible, a big group, and just kind of be you know cannon fodder right which is sad to say but they they are good at just being a front line for Gimli while he does massive damage so that's why a lot of times I'll just have guardians and ram riders with Gimli but um right now what I'm doing in this one though is I'm actually using Dol Amroth Knights because I have that as an access in this game mode this this season not everyone's gonna have that and then I'm using you know axe throwers and ram riders in the same group so it, it gives because the Dol Amroth Knights are fantastic tanks they're some of the best tanks in the game probably mm -hmm. I think it probably is the best tank in the game um <laughs> pretty much they, not maybe health but just their ability to be able to absorb the damage for those few rounds oh, yeah. is so amazing we'll talk about it in a minute but um yeah what do you think then as a placement I would vote somewhere between B and C yeah I think they're 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 B because you can you can use them as tanks when you're in a pinch uh, and you're not going to feel a huge hit to some of the other tanks, but mm -hmm. um, their damage is a lot lower than most of the tanks, I feel like, that you would usually use. And yeah. so, you know, unless you have a way to increase their damage, which is why I think that they're fine, but they're not situational only. Like, you can I would use them, use with them to just a full stack of those to, like, for most... Uh, like damage dealing commanders and i'd feel pretty comfortable about it yeah yeah i mean and and again they can script very quickly so mm -hmm. even though they are a little more pricey they can script quickly and sometimes when you're doing a lot of battles you can't wait eight hours to conscript a full group of horses right, right. <laughs> if you're doing cataphracts or something but you only have to wait like four and a half hours or something i don't remember the exact number right now but it to conscript you know double the amount of units for the guardians so it's definitely nice um, awesome. All right, let's do, uh, since we're on melees, let's go ahead and talk about Tower Guards. Yeah. All right. Uh, tower Guards are, um, they're pretty well-rounded, I think, personally, my, with my view on them. Because uh, they have the same shielding ability as Guardians have. And not mm -hmm. just that, they do, um, they take a, they do a bunch more damage and they receive a lot less damage from mounted units which is really 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 good in my opinion so what do you think about it jethros um and they're fast well, we could we definitely have a discussion about it because yeah. of most of the units on here i don't really feel like there's any that that underperform and disappoint me very much mm -hmm. the closest thing i could think of is this and one other unit i think and so I think the Guards of Towers are very good, and they're good against, um, what do you call it? Against mounted, the mounted like you yeah. said. But they're only good against physical damage with their other ability, and only good against mounted. And True. they don't have a way to make mounted units attack them. So mm -hmm. if you use them as a front line, the mounted units might go and hit a different target anyways. And, and focus so will they, destroy them. Yeah, they can kind yeah. of get destroyed. And they don't do very enough damage themselves to kind of no. make up for how tanky they are. Like Their damage is terrible. And, and yeah. so, in my opinion, like they could use a little bit of a, a change in how they work mechanically mm -hmm. um, to either make themselves. If if it were to say, if you get rid of the extra damage they they deal, and you make it to where mounted units are forced to attack them first, that would be cool. That would be much more useful for how their abilities so, work. So instead of a damage buff to mounted mm -hmm. things. Yeah. They get they get like the first two rounds or three rounds or something. Mountain units have to attack them, and they get a damage re reduction yeah. from them. That would be cool. That would be a cool yeah, thing. I mean, I think so you're thinking more they because could, then you ha they have a very clear identity of like you know of trying to thwart the mounted units without like a really easy way to get around it. Because without any sort of taunt, I've I've seen the mounted units just go and hit other melees or, you know, even in some cases, uh, hit the ranged units. They don't take damage on behalf of allies. And so yeah. the only way that I actually see them be decent is when you just do a full stack of them 
on like a Gal- Galadriel, and yeah, then that's kind of that's kind so of just it. And if they don't an ever enemy, do anything yeah. themselves. They just try to survive, and you get wins when you use you get ties when you use them correctly, and mm-hmm. you lose when they're when they're used. Yeah, and so and the thing is too, if you're gonna use a full stack, these guys are by the way just slightly cheaper on the iron. They're more expensive mm. on the wood than guardians, and they're more expensive on the food than guardians by four hundred per unit. So they they about the same amount of time training. Guardians are a tiny bit longer, but realistically, like you're saying, I think that honestly, if you're gonna stack something as a tank frontline, guardians are probably better at it, unless it's horses. Obviously, like it's a Galadriel, right? Honestly, like it would be better to probably have guardians. They do more damage. They have higher defense. They have more health. Right, they're a little bit slower, um, but then you know they take all this reduced damage and they have fire resistance. Right, the only yeah. difference would be the really all the only benefit to stacking them is that if you're training them in the case of this game because you can you can conscript instead of higher. That's a game thing only for you're right, Rings of Power game mode or uh, Kings of Men. Uh, but the horses, right? Like you're saying again, that's why a lot of people do it though because a lot of people use horse builds. Which is probably yeah. why a lot of people stack them in a group, just so yeah. their leader can survive and do damage. Glad. And they're alert. so slow; it's painful. You want to use them to defend against a unit that uses that moves super quickly, yeah. and can just juke around the battlefield. It's kind of hard unless you're using them purely defensively at a crossing, you know. And yeah, or you have like a ton of players all like covering yeah. a wall up with them. Yeah. So. so- Personally, I think that they need a small change to how they work to, to buff them and make so them maybe a little, a little bit, bit of a buff. Useful. Yeah. Yeah. I After our conversation, I, I agree. I think they could use a little nerf. I mean, excuse me, a little buff. <laughs> right. So maybe yeah. put them in the bottom here. Yep. And I'm sure I'm sure some people are going to disagree with us, but that's yeah. fine. You could disagree. <laughs> that's, fine. Um, that's totally fine. We'll hurt Probably feelings. people who use nothing but Theoden, Aowen, and Gandalf the White. <laughs> yeah, I know. And they're like, I get destroyed by that. But yeah, yeah I mean, that is the, that's a very... <laughs> Honestly, it's a very situational thing. So, like, I guess yeah. we could put them in situational only, too. But I do agree they probably need a little bit of buff to make them feel... Because, honestly, Guardians are just going to be a better stack unit. Unless yeah. you know you're fighting all horses, right? And even then, yeah. Guardians even then, are still... You get good. ties. You don't get wins yeah. off of it. So Yeah. And, again, Guardians have that little extra damage thing, too. It's like, not only do they do just more damage in general... All right, sweet. So we got let's we got them in there. Oh, I forgot to show the list. Well, I dropped them in. Well, here we go. We drop them in there. Boop. Okay. So there we go. Those guys. Now we're gonna talk about. Um, let's talk about the. I don't know much about the heralds. All right, Jeff. All right. I'm gonna well, let you take away. Are... Away. <laughs> I don't <laughs> even have those to show. So. Yeah. yeah. They're elf units, and their only ability is they have built-in counterattack, which reduces their regular damage by 10% and allows them to counterattack when maxed out. I think uh, they do 25% damage on mm-hmm. each counterattack. Um, these units actually have a pretty decent damage range, which they can be kind of shocking now. They they buffed them a little bit ago, and in, instead of reducing their basic from 20 that it, re- it did reduce by 10 now and then they kept the damage that it outputs from the retail from the counter attack yeah so um they're actually in a pretty good spot the thing is is that there's only very specific commanders that can utilize them um effectively to make them strong to to win or be cost effective in in a fight um mm-hmm. and they're really good because their counter attack mechanic they're good against mostly all melee compositions um, but something that I don't think a lot of people really notice or pay attention to is that ranged units, if they're the only thing left on the field, the counterattack will hit the one ranged unit that's left because I don't know if you guys have ever watched the combat when you actually watch the animation of how the combat goes on and the fight and you actually watch it instead of reading the log. Mm-hmm. You watch the battle and the units actually move around to the enemy that they're going to attack to hit. And the reason why um, the counterattack doesn't hit on range units is usually because the melee unit is at the location of a specific enemy that it's hitting mate with melee, and then the counterattack can't reach over to where the range is hitting from. But oh, whenever that's, it's that's melee, logic. it has okay. to get in range to hit them. So in some ways, it does still counterattack on range units. And so mm. um, it doesn't right. get completely countered by that, which is really interesting. 
Hmm. Uh, and who stacks? Like Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say who stacks them normally because I've seen big stacks of them on. Um, is it uh, Elrond? No, no, it's Gilgalad, right? Gilgalad can stack them really well. Um, Elrond can stack them pretty well, but Elrond. Kyrdan? I'm trying to remember uh, if. Kirdan can, but he's not as strong as some other okay. builds that he has with them. Okay. Um, and that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I mean, there's yeah. nobody else that really uses them effectively. It's just those tier three elven yeah. commanders, which is why I think it's situation only because they're really good and really cost effective for those those commanders. Uh, yeah. And I don't think there's a way to get rid of what makes them cool and unique without uh, making them OP. So I don't think they need a buff. I think they're, they're in a good spot. They're useful for what they are. Though I will say it is really lame that there's not another melee elf tank unit. There's just them. Yeah. And the only other one you have is a neutral unit, which is keepers. And they're squishy as can be. So they're damage dealers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're pure damage dealers. And so they don't work as a front line. So it would be nice to have another okay. elf option. And so that's the other thing is they're really they're useful as a tank for elves early on. Uh -huh. You don't have any other option. But again, I think they're 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 meant to be in this situational only situational. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd 100% agree because I mean, I don't think I've ever even used them. But again, I don't use any of the elven heroes very much. I may try to use Gilgalad in the future. But um, yeah, we kind of hovered over Gilgalad's abilities while you talked because they can kind of see. Yeah. all these abilities and not to mention well prepared right counter mm -hmm. doesn't that work because they have a counter strike and that can also work so well, well what's interesting with with him is he can when when they dodge they still counter attack mm, okay That's so cool. every time they miss <laughs> because they don't have pursuit they like avoid the attack and then the her herald still goes and counter attacks anyways uh, even though they dodge and they it. have the evade yeah that's so good yes. okay so but so situational really depends on the commander depends on who you're trying to fight kind of thing so yeah boop all right there we go they are in the situational sweet wow look at this we're going through it uh axe throwers <laughs> Go ahead. Axe throwers are good. All right. At least in my opinion, I really like the axe throwers personally with I use for. Um, there's a lot of reasons why the axe throwers are so powerful. Let me just bring them up here real quick. Um, the axe throwers are really, really strong at. Oh, well, my game just popped and turned off, but that's OK. Uh, the axe throwers are really, really strong because they have the giant slayer, right? Like the bow knights, which is the plus 50 percent right to giant creatures. They're also really good in a lot of other ways as well. Um, I like to use them with a lot of like, for example, situationally, my Gimli uses that. My, he has special weapon, gives plus three to attack. Or if he uses Ori's special weapon. Again, now this is talking if you're someone that has a rank 10 dwarf leader. But there's some really powerful, like Ori's level one ability on his weapon alone makes them so much more powerful because it gives them a high chance to always hit at their high point. So they're kind of their weakness is the fact that their damage chance, like every unit has a damage chance, right? A certain amount. Yep. They're Boring. between nine and 29, which is very, <laughs> very wild. Yes. So again, I'm sure it's they're trying to get their ax in the head and sometimes they get it in the troll's foot. You know what I'm saying? So it's not going to do as much damage always as a joke. But um, they also have um, Battler's Bane, so they do plus 20% against melee as well. So again, why this is good is means that that large, they're really good against trolls. They're really good against mama kill. They will annihilate them. They're also rather good against eagles because eagles count as melee and a lot, and the eagles have a bonus against um, melee units, but but axlers aren't melee units. They're ranged throwers. So they don't get that reduction from the eagles that they kind actually of thing. take more damage from range so exactly exactly yeah. they take more damage from them and they do more damage to melee units and eagles count as melee so they're very very good at that for taking things like that but um yeah they're they're really strong just because they're dwarves there's so many cool buffs that a lot of dwarf heroes give to that yeah. it makes them a really good choice with a lot of the dwarven heroes whether it be yeah. falgan or you know ori or gimli either special items or their abilities it really depends so there's some situationalness there but they are used quite a bit what do you think jethro son 
usage um, and so it's I wish in a way I think that they're as far as comparing them to other ranged units they're more hit or miss yeah so you know that's I really don't think they're meta <laughs> what we mean by situational right yeah um it's hard to say fine there are better options because there aren't better options in the situations where you're meant to use them Mm -hmm. So, because we use them in the right situation, they are the best option. The only thing that I that you, that you said is like their damage range is very wide. If you don't have a way to make their damage more consistent, then they're not going to output as much as you would expect because sometimes they'll roll low, and sometimes they'll yeah. be amazing and roll their high and do a ton of damage and get all their bonuses on the right. But they're more meant for taking out those super tanky frontline units, and then usually. Um, you know, you would want to find a way to get rid of the the other units, like with another unit. So, like, they, you kind of want to yeah. pair them with something else. So they um, they are situational because it really but they matters. They do well in their situations, which is yeah. why I don't think that they need any type of buff. No. They're good. Yeah, they just need to be used in either with the right commander that helps them mm -hmm. out to be more consistent, right and with the right gear or uh, be used against the right units because there's a couple ways that they can be used in good situations but they're not they're not good all around like not just anyone can use them i think that they're also situational yeah, they yeah you can't just throw them on theoden <laughs> like yeah <laughs> theoden like i mean like that would not be good <laughs> so yeah i do agree so we're thinking situational then yep Okay, I, I definitely, they win. I definitely they agree. They do win in their situations. Yeah, and and again, guys, just because it's C, we're not saying that that means bad. I know when we hear C and D, we think, oh, yeah. they're terrible. Where the the bar is very low. The bar is below D for being like outright don't use right in yeah. this particular thing. All these units are decent to an extent. We're just trying to distinguish yeah, for you what's important. Good with the important. exact right thing. You know, yeah. I mean, things decent with the exact right thing, but all right, that's why we have better off the better options though, because exactly there are there are things that are good, but they're not the best. Exactly, and situational things are are probably even better than some of the things in uh, fine in B, but only when used correct. Yes, exactly. So, um, I think we should go into the sharpshooter or shooters. I know it's only no S on it, but. There's three of them there. It's sharpshooters. <laughs> All right. So sharpshooters. Uh, I don't use them as much as you do, Jethro, so you should probably take yeah. this one first. So I'll get them up, though. You oh, do see them. these guys quite a lot, and the main uh, quirk that they have that's kind of cool is that they do damage, bonus 40% damage for the first two rounds. Not first two hits, first two rounds. Mm -hmm. So... There are certain ways to benefit from that, such as a uh, follow-up. You could have a character uh, that's built around them double striking. And sometimes I think people might think of these guys as meta um, because they're used in a lot of meta characters builds. Most yeah. notably, like Gandalf the Grey is probably the one of the most meta, most overused commanders in the game and he has the convener ability which allows the po possibility to follow up or as we sometimes call double strike on the first two rounds so sharpshooters are really good plus he has the ability to buff all he has the access to items that can buff range damage on every single piece of gear he could wear there's an item that can buff range damage by plus three when max and so when you combine that all together, you get a really nice nuke hit from uh, mm -hmm. Gandalf the Grey with Convener on the first two rounds. Or, you know, um, other characters have follow-up too, and it could potentially trigger early, but it's less reliable, right? Yeah. So the thing is, is that he is they're really strong when used correctly. They're really strong on um, nobility leaders that have the nobility because they give extra damage to men. Yeah. But they're not in general better than some other options. So um, these are like axe throwers. <laughs> I, I, yeah, they are. Yeah. They're kind of they're kind of yeah. like axe throwers to some degree. Because they're good, um, but you really I need. I think the axe the throwers room. might be worse if used on the wrong commander than sharpshooters. Yeah. Sharpshooters are just better generic. if used yeah. on the right commander. Yeah, in my opinion. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that there are better options 
in general and i i think it, they're fine in my opinion is they're fine but there are better options um in general mm -hmm. um you know we have the when we think about the situationalness of them there's less situations where they get really good than there are situations where they're just slightly subpar yeah, That's the way yeah. I think of it. and they and they'd work on a lot more characters than axe throwers benefit because they yeah. have a very their um their shooting range too it's not nine to 29 it's much i don't know if yeah. you don't remember the exact number right now i don't have it but um, i think it's like 20 to 27 28 so it's like a much more consistent damage yeah so you're thinking then I'm, i'll go with your vote on this so you're thinking b fine but yeah. there's better options yeah because i think there's a lot of uh gear that's really good for them it's 18 to 26 on the damage, by the way, on uh, the base okay. damage. But then you do get okay. the 40% for the first two rounds. And it doesn't matter what commander is using them. You still get that. It doesn't have to be a man. But the ones that have nobility and coalition, like maybe Arwen is a really good example for who can, like, squeeze out a decent amount of damage. But then she can't use yeah. the fireworks. Wizard fireworks are really good for them. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, let's so, put them in the, in the fine but better fine. option. Okay, yeah. all right, perfect. They're more consistent for the average character. The yes, average yes. Commander. Awesome, awesome. So, what about we take a commercial break for us? It'll only okay. be a half second for you guys, so we'll see you in a half second. <laughs> We're back! All right, I know that was a half second for you guys, but we are happy with dinner. I don't know if you saw, but my uh, sister might have snuck food back here. <laughs> <laughs> part of the video I did not notice. She was very sneaky, uh, but it was very good. All right, let's continue on. So we left off. We finished up picking uh, Sharpshooter into uh, fine, better options. So let us talk about Dunedain or Duodain, or whatever you want to call it. Um, so basically, it is the tier three um, awesome unit. It's an awesome unit. That's what I think it is. Um, but what do you think about it, Jethro? So why don't you go over it more? Because I don't actually use... I only used them a tiny bit when I was in Arnor. So I'm not, like, a super expert with them. I'll well, get them up here on the screen. Basically, these are men units that are 100% anti-ranged. They focus ranged units, do extra damage to ranged units, and defend against ranged units. So they are cool. very good against ranged units, which makes them actually exceptionally good in roleplay because people on the good side tend to have to use ranged units to get damage, mm -hmm. but makes them a little bit more hit or miss in mixed servers, non roleplay, because there are a lot of evil side units that are melee that are meant to do damage. So, <clears throat> really, really good when used correctly. Not too bad when they're used wrongly, actually. They, they actually do a decent amount of damage on 15 on to 22. Own. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's interesting because they, as far as melee damage dealers go on the good side, they actually are one of the better melee damage dealers. Um, unless you're talking about the potentially the cavalry. Mm -hmm. The cavalry do a decent amount of damage, more, like potentially more. But yeah, they they do pretty good if you if you put uh, points into them into melee, and you have a nobility. They are um, user very and, expensive. <laughs> mm -hmm. On a and side they're note, what? they're pretty darn expensive according to what I'm reading here. They're, they're pretty more expensive. expensive. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not quite as bad so, as any horses, but they still take twelve and minutes 50 seconds to conscript they definitely group. take a while so I it's mean, as hard to they're conscript. faster than a lot of things um hmm, i have them when all my conscription stuff maxed out they only take seven minutes 41 oh, seconds oh okay so. okay that's true um, i haven't that's I probably because i have the camp yet. or that's i did true. have the camp I don't think I have my base fully upgraded for me. Or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what it is. I have the base yeah. fully upgraded. So seven minutes, but, 41 seconds. Got yeah. It. So they're pretty, they're hard to conscript. They're not very hard to conscript, but they're kind of hard to conscript. But their damage is decent. 15 to 22 is is above average for rate for uh, melee because they're more meant to be melee damage than melee tanks. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, you use them to have them go after yeah. uh, ranged targets, and they and prioritize they not con- them. Yeah, not to confuse people too, right? Like for I'm sure our rice war people know this, but melee being it's physical damage, right? Like it's a physical, it's not no, a magical not damage. Yeah, melee can be can be elemental too because you have fire. The alchemists are melee true, units, true, and they true. do fire damage. True, but like I think a lot of people think melee, and they think, oh, sword, and it's like, well, no, it just means up close, right? It just means up close, but, yeah. But but still, even that, these are technically a ranged unit. That's why I think some people can get confused with it being melee. The Dunedains are melee units. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, oh, you're right. They are melee, huh? They're using swords. I was yeah. thinking because they have bows on their backs that they. They you're do right, have bows. Right. Yeah. It's a yeah, little bit they, tricky. Yeah. Yeah. True. So when they go for ranged units, then they're actually a melee unit hunting a ranged unit. Yes. Then, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's my fault. My own brain had a little. That's why <laughs> I just saw the archer, start. the bow and arrow on their back. I'm like, oh, ranged unit. Why are they calling it melee? That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Pretty I cool. think another reason why you may have easily gotten confused is because the Urukai, the elite, um, elites are they called? They're ranged units that are focused ranged units. Oh, yeah. They, they have mm-hmm. the effect that I think you might be thinking of. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I forget what they're called, but. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. But yeah. Yeah, my because name. and then an alchemist, obviously, they're melee units, so it is up close, but they're fire. So they're, right. F- it's basically fire damage, which right. is different or, than or focus. Keepers have focus damage in addition to their physical damage. Like, That's true. And oath breakers are all, too. all focus. Yeah, which is really kind of interesting. It is interesting because yeah. they take no physical, like they take so little melee damage, but like they do focus. Yeah. Yeah. Which they makes take sense. Very little physical damage. They're ghostly creatures. All right. So sorry, I got us off track. So okay. where do you think these guys should be put? In. Um. <clears throat> I feel like if they didn't exist, the range units would be OP. Yeah. In some ways. Yeah. Um. So, uh, the thing is, mm, they're fine. They're really good in situation in the right situation. So they have to be. I, it's hard to say situational only. Yeah. Though. It hurts me a little bit because. They kind of are a me- they're a meta that's necessary to keep the meta in check. Yeah. Which just makes them just counter meta to some degree because range units are kind of are kind of super meta. Yeah. Um, of course, you know we're looking only at the lens of good side right now, but yes. Um, <clears throat> you know if we were to compare across the board, we would have more to talk about. I think sure. they're pretty much. I would consider just based on the rest of our tier, I would say maybe situational only. It's situational, yeah, just because, like, you usually would... But there would be other people that would probably be better as a melee fighter unit, but yeah. if you're trying to get rid of an archer build that you can't get to the back line, they'll prioritize the back line. Yep. They'll hunt them down. Very good at it. And again, I didn't mean to just totally mix everyone up with the... With the I just saw the bow and arrow on their back, I'm like, range! And I'm like, oh no, they're holding a sword, so... They do both. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool if it was a unit that, like, rotated yeah, depending fight. on the situation? Yeah, that would be cool. They're considered that, ranged against melee and melee against. Range yeah, I think that would have been a really together. cool idea for the Dunedain <clears throat> because they're like a ranger. Ideas video coming out. Soon. Yeah, that would have been a really cool <laughs> thing. Make it. Yeah, exactly. Maybe not soon. <clears throat> it's not my <laughs> yeah, channel. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll 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 figure something out. This is really fun though. All right, yeah. so I think that's a good. I agree with your pick there. I think that's a good one. So let's go ahead and do the Sentinels, the Elven Archers. Of Linden, uh, meta. Or, they're not Linden. <laughs> meta, yeah. I mean, they're they're, they're good. They're really I mean, in a I, lot I of don't, situations, and they they're I, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I think you're they, right because I I don't use them very much, so I I kind of agree with your pick. But right. um, like, they seem just really good. What are their two are. abilities? Did you have them memorized? I don't have them here to show. Oh so. yeah, they just have one ability. Uh, it's the they evade the first hit. Uh, this they picture says there's an arrow ability too. Um, that's probably from Elite Training Grounds. Oh, oh, you're, you're right. You're right. That's probably what it is. Yeah. 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 You're probably right. That's what it is. It's a picture from that. 
All right, yeah. all right. So ignore the little picture guys that you see at the bottom right there. Just they have the <laughs> one thing. Yeah, so they're really good because they're very consistent with their damage difference yeah. too, right? And they're rather reasonable with resources. Not only is it consistent, but it is also the highest max damage of any ranged unit per command. Yeah. There's no other unit in the game that has a higher ranged base unit uh, per command that is, well, um, that... I think think of one upset exception is the spirit of the woods, but they're like, they're their own thing. So they're they a neutral unit. Count. We're gonna yeah. yeah, we're gonna talk about them <clears throat> later. So you think meta then with these Absolutely. guys? Absolutely, I because I do see them in everything, like yeah, every elven you build. Want a lot of consistent, liable damage. Range damage is really easy to boost with items, uh, especially on the good side. Mm -hmm. And um, they have that avoidance ability for their first ability, which makes them really good to just throw a one of. In yeah. any com any just to take a hit with them you know what i mean true because they'll dodge true. the first one then a second effect and that's why a lot of people will just throw a one of in there or even like 300 to 500 of them like on the side just to see what they do you know yeah exactly so. exactly and the thing is too that's another thing with like even though we didn't say it but like we were talking about this a little bit during our little break there um that the axe thrower is really we feel like they used to be really extreme just damage difference it was three to 33 which was insane but um which is kind of silly that it was even three that seems so low for a tier yeah. three unit at all in the first place but we think that instead of bringing it they should have brought it up to nine and probably left it higher not brought it down to 29 they should have left yeah. it on the high end because honestly if they were that the high end still they would probably be more up there with mm -hmm. being damage dealers this range yeah especially because their average damage would be damage would be close to like the mid uh to low 20s and that would yeah. make their bonuses make up for the fact of what their average damage is. Yeah. And then from there, it'd be hit or miss. Yeah, So I definitely exactly. think they deserve a buff on the top end. Um, that way, certain effects that make them good do make them better than the than this unit. Mm -hmm. um, so, Because they're situational, but yet they might need a little bit of a buff. Yeah, right. so but we'll keep them situational. All right, on to Tier 4 yes. units. All right, so we have Four. six of the human... There's six, only six right now, right? <laughs> they added the new ones, right? Just make yeah. sure we got them all here. Um, yeah. So the good uh, side, yes. Let's start with one of our favorites, which is a huge deal in the new game mode, the Kings of right Rings, King Kingdoms of Men, Rings of Power, whatever. You know, the new one. Um, the Amroth Swan Swan Knights <laughs> <laughs> from Dol Amroth. I was just okay, teasing Jeff with that. You can throw that in at the end if you want. <laughs> So I always call them the other thing, and that's uh, technically where they're from, but not their name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hmm, so these guys are good. Yes. What are your What are your overall impressions on this? And I'll say a little bit before we decide. Um. After you. My overall impression of them is that they are one of the most useful units in the entire game. Yeah. Even um, though they are expensive. And take yeah. a long time to hire. They cost quite a lot, but in a lot of ways, they're worth it. And the trick with them is that they only get amazing usefulness in the first three rounds. So generally, I, I tr they're still useful after that. But my point is, is that you'd rather Cataphracts be taking the damage after the first three rounds than your Swan Knight. Because yes. of how expensive they are. And so okay. generally what I will do is I will make a unit composition with a mixture of Swan Knights and Cataphracts and then have my main damage dealer behind that. Whether it's a range unit or even you could use a melee uh, unit um, that you want to deal damage with on the side. But mm -hmm. just the fact that there's extra chances of them not hitting your main damage dealer uh, against these really tanky uh, Swan Knights and Cataphracts is just yeah. really exceptional. Um, and so I think that... Um, my philosophy is try to make them die with however many of them are going to die make them die in, after the end of the third round mm -hmm. and then maybe something else is tanking for you at that point that's not so expensive which is why um, you usually do what's the amount you usually do you just said like i usually do somewhere to... between 500 to 750 small oh, okay night. okay um sometimes i will do more it just depends on what i if what i'm facing against because they are weak to elemental damage so um, mm -hmm. If you fight Oathbreakers, if you fight um, uh, Alchemists or anything else that does fire damage, like Pirates maybe, 
um, or whatever they're called, Corsairs, right? The tier three unit is called Corsair. Yeah. Um, then they're pretty weak to those because what makes them insanely tanky is how high their armor is for the first three rounds. Mm -hmm. And also they're amazing because of that taunt. I mean, we haven't mentioned it because we almost think that everybody knows this, but it has for the first three rounds that they guard the normal attacks mm -hmm. that are dealt to your allied units. Uh, they guard and they take the damage instead. And they get a um, hundred defense. And they get at max, Crazy. they get a hundred plus defense, which gives them almost like a hundred and what, like 70, 180 uh, armor? Yeah, because without... normally it's 66. So yeah, so 166. And yeah. then you usually have like maybe one like defense plus on top armor of that. Yeah. Characters. So yeah, I mean, you're usually hitting like 180. And, you know, for those that don't know, Usually after about a hundred armor, sometimes people argue a little less, but my opinion is about a hundred to 120 armor. It kind of is so diminishing returns that it's not really that big of a deal that you get the extra. But when you think about how many things there are that reduce armor, it is nice to have that in the very beginning. The buffer. Like, because it it'll just help to give you, to make sure that you're mitigating a ton of physical damage. Yeah. But then you get hit by alchemists, you get hit by oath breakers, you get hit by corsairs um you're and again it says normal attacks on behalf and that's what you're saying because all mm -hmm. those do a different kind of they don't get defended from defenses right because uh, they, so they, they do they take the damage but what happens is that normal attacks what that means is that there's special effects on units that aren't their basic attack right yeah so it so like it will it will protect and it will guard the the um like Oathbreaker or hits or the alchemist it'll okay. it'll guard them and take the hit from them but what it won't protect from are like scythes on your uh war chariots that does the two instances of damage early like that's not a normal damage not normal attack yeah um it you know it's physical what about damage. ravengers sorry trolls uh, ravengers will it so is that uh, ravengers yeah. have the ability to hit all three units right so if that yeah. triggers they would trigger three times on the Swan Knight. Oh, okay, so they'll just clobber your Swan Knights. Yes. But the Swan Knights will try to absorb it. Another one, the Swans are like, nope, and they guard him, and nope, okay. I guard him, right? But that is better than that is better than it hitting your other unit, though, because yeah. you're going to mitigate so much of the damage. But Which what, is, okay, go ahead. Well, yeah. what I was going to say, but that's why I would say that the, the Cataphracts after round three become better because they are reduce, reducing the damage from melee units by 15 and they mm -hmm. have the 10% damage reduction. And so yeah. that's a flat 25% from against the Oathbreakers and against the uh, Alchemists. And yeah. it actually does mitigate quite a lot of their damage if you're hitting. But the Swan Knights just have the 10%. They don't have the extra minus 15. Yes, so, yes. And both of them have a weak... So same... after round three, they're not quite as good, even though maybe their stats are slightly better, but... It's yeah, because they have like just a huge. little bit more um, health and a little bit more armor, or about mm -hmm. the same armor yeah. as the. So yeah, they're they're in general like slightly better, but not yeah. for the the cost difference, right? So that's why yeah. I kind of myself I hope that they die after the third round on the third round or on the mm -hmm. fourth round, so that my other tank unit that I have left there will take the extra damage. Because I also don't want my cataphracts. I'm sorry. I also don't want my swan knights to uh, to die earlier than that, because then I'm not it's, that taunt ability is not as like useful. Yeah. It's not working anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah. so that's um, why you try to get that fine balance of how many you have at the beginning. All right. Cool. Yeah. So well, you, you you could throw this unit on any anything in the whole game yeah and it's going to be very very good um pair it with just a little bit of elemental resistance on a piece of armor or on a uh, commander skill tree and you have a tank that that like i said 500 to 750 of these guys can tank like most commanders first three rounds of damage like super Which is easily so good yeah so then um you're probably thinking then i would think this but my vote would be it would be more of a meta character like if you have uh, I, access to it. I would say that they could nerf it. <laughs> you think it's that you think it's a the bonus armor and changing it to something else. The taunt can yeah. stay, but the bonus armor effect the taunts at what least makes it cool. give it a way that you can reduce its physical damage uh but without it just being completely immune to like oh damage reduction because you even get rid of them by 50 percent with like say ram riders right yeah they're still gonna have almost a hundred armor 
from 50% yeah. damage reduction, that's still like a huge chunk of physical damage reduction. Mm -hmm. So um, if I were to try and tweak things around and um, I mean, they already tried nerfing them, I believe in general by increasing how much they cost, yeah. which has made me start to think about how like that dynamic with them, not wanting them to still be and there taking damage. They after take a that. long time to conscript like, mm -hmm. like mine with max right now, 15 <clears throat> minutes per group. Yeah. Like 15 minutes, 23 seconds. That's compared to like the f four minutes on the other like guardians or five minutes or whatever. So it's well, like, if you compare it to other tier fours, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of Trolls. the same. Right. So, yeah. but if they're a group of 50 compared to like, what is a troll? Is it a group of one? Is it, is it a one? Gr and they're eagles? groups of four. Or they five? But they're four. Okay. That's per command though. Yeah, so yeah. it counts how many there are in the yeah. command. So, all right. But, so where should we, where do you think we should set this one? I feel like I they're kind of, of the a maybe ones. nerf. Maybe. Yeah. I know you don't want them to be Yeah, I, so I know. It's you. like, I, I, but, honestly, but it, I it mean, does seem like they comparatively, comparatively to other units, they seem really, 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 really strong. Like, yeah. cause like even like chariots, like, I mean, honestly, chariots probably aren't quite as bad as them. Not that we're comparing evil units, but they're also pretty darn crazy good. Like, especially I mean, in this game, though, because you get to them. Several. Let me put it this way. Uh, I don't know if yeah. you guys are familiar with the uh, skill tree half elven, but basically you're choosing for every man in your command, you get plus 10 speed, plus 10 defense. And for every elf in your command, in your in your composition, you get plus 10 damage. And I consistently choose to lose out on that extra 10 damage to put in the swan knights on commanders that use it and 10 damage extra is a lot. I think most of you would agree. Like that sounds really appetizing to have that extra damage bonus over the 10 defense and 10 yeah. speed. And yet I consistently choose to still throw them in there, even though it's going to reduce the damage of my damage dealers. Well, yeah, Cause you, and it's, it's cause better bang for your useful. buck. It's a better bang well, for your buck as the saying goes. Yeah. Right? A little bit more bang like, for your buck. Cause yeah. you're, it, it saves you from losing a lot more troops, even though you might not kill quite as many. But yep. yeah, so you usually come out on top compared to the enemy, which is kind of the goal of this game. It's all a math numbers game, right? Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think I think that uh, I think you've convinced me, Jethro. So I think that they might be they're somewhere hovering between meta and maybe a little too strong. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll put them in the too strong for this, and then you guys leave comments what you think. Um, by the way, little side note: if you guys played the battle for Middle Earth, one of the reasons I keep calling them Dole Amroth Knights instead <laughs> of Swan Knights. Is I'll do the voice, but they always the, the the knights in that game when you summon them the Swan Knights they go Knights of Dol Amroth when they come in and I played <laughs> that game for hundreds of hours through high school and as a child so I think that's probably why it keeps hopping in my head is Knights of Dol Amroth because the guy literally says they're called Swan Knights too in that game and he's like Knights <laughs> of Dol Amroth and like runs in so like yeah, I think I that's probably it's an old old habits die hard okay um so let's drop it in maybe nerf. Boop. All right, and I didn't, I probably didn't show anybody that, but uh, here you go. There we go. Just to make sure I'm showing the thing. Drop it in, maybe nerf. All right, let's uh, finish up these last couple here. Um, so we have the, um, you you probably want to talk about these first, but we have the Elven March Wardens. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. All right. So let's. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's talk March about Wardens. Elven March Wardens. All right. So I have PTSD from the March Wardens because. <laughs> In our season one, Lothlorien just ran us through, and I was we were Gondor. We uh, Zolan and yeah. I played together, so we had the Swan Knights, which was really cool and all. Yeah. But at the end of the season, I gained access to the King of the Dead. Yeah. And I got Oathbreaker Oathbreakers. In season one, Oathbreakers, instead of what like they do now, instead of reducing physical damage by 90%, they avoided all physical damage. So you couldn't hit them, except if you had Pursuit. Oh. And the March Wardens had Pursuit built into their kit, and they guaranteed hit, and these things had no health, so they just were getting deleted. And I, it was my only tier three commander at the time it was the one that i wanted the most i thought oh he's so cool king of the dead i'm gonna yeah. use these, these oath breakers got his and letter 
we just got melted. And I remember everybody was complaining about him too. Yes. Like, and I, I don't know. Haldir was insane yeah. too that season because people could get him up to oh. respect five pretty easily. And they had easily. all the eagles. They had all they the Bjornings. They had to frontline tank and range yeah. in the back. And that's still a great build today. It's still really, really good. Yeah. Um, but now that I actually considered it a buff when they changed it to where the Oathbreakers do 90% reduction because now they're not so weak to pursuit, which everybody is running because of how mm -hmm. strong avoidance is. So it's kind of a meta shaping, um, meta shaping. Like Gimli weapon OP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Gimli weapon, unique weapon gives a, a um, pursuit. pursuit. So anyways, uh, that's Are they my still strong? Box that I'm sad about, but they're. You can say your piece about them too, real quick, if you want. Yeah, I just remember. Um, uh, I've used them a little bit, and I realized even just their base stats for how much they cost are really, really, really good. So, like, yep. and again, in this game, we're not seeing them quite as much, but that's because we don't start as a Lothlorien team. We start as having good and evil men and then we have to hire right in because we're playing the rings of power game mode right uh kings of men right the game mode um so i have seen them still though but um they are definitely very very powerful i don't think they've really been nerfed since that time i think just other things have balanced around them right 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 so yeah. they're still a strong unit because what are their two special abilities um, or do they only have one so it's only it has keen eye which does the 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 pursuit the pursuit effect. yeah i don't know i don't know what the other one is off it's the top a of my double head. arrow one unless this is the unless trying... i think that's another one that's the elite training grounds i think that's the only effect they have they okay but how, what, what else does it do it doesn't just do pursuit it or is it a there chance to gain pursuit uh, keen eye. Oh, that's the pursuit. Oh, it has indomitable too, so it can't be stunned and gains defense. Oh, oh, and your witch. Oh, and your, your you had stun on your yeah. king of the dead. That's why it was so frustrating. Yeah, yeah. Well, I had yeah, I had stun commanders because I was using Gandalf the yeah, Grey. Yeah, I don't know, man. Then Them too. not being like, able to be stunned, also getting defense, and having pursuit on a unit that has yeah. a damage of fifty nine to sixty. They are yeah. consistently going to hit yeah. like a truck and their defense is 41 and their health is 66. Like yeah. they are all around monstrous. Now, are they expensive? They are really, really expensive. But yeah. honestly, like, yeah, they're, I, they're I, definitely I, a little bit stronger than Sentinels. It right? really comes down to, are we putting them in meta or nerf <laughs> level? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what it really comes down to in my mind, because that yeah. is insane that they have that again. We're not seeing them a lot in this season because people really have to do the work to get to that unit right yep. because that unit um also you can't just hire tier four units you have to get the location or again you have to um entice them right what is it called when you want to bring them into this game with the ring power convert uh, convert conversion. so you have to con do get conversion on them or mm -hmm. you know or have the thing so it's a lot harder to get them so i think that's why you don't see them in this game mode as much but honestly in lothlorien they're always rampaging around the world mm-hmm yeah, and they say dwarves. Yeah, they're a really problems. good unit. They, I mean, <laughs> think about how much you you choose to miss out on damage so you can get pursuit on your items. You choose to miss out on damage so that you can get stun immunity on your items. <laughs> Yet they have, they, they have all have that. Built in. You can yeah, and their damage is super high. That gives you madness immunity for your units, and they just they can't be stopped by anything pretty much. And, at that and they're point. really good with a lot of the damage, uh, reduction. And not to mention a lot of the elven heroes are very good at buffing elves like five of them oh yeah so that makes them good i would i would venture to say that they're at minimum meta oh yeah I think in, especially meta. the reason i say that they're meta is because if you have them you will use them period. yeah yeah there's like there's not a better thing to use <laughs> over them with yeah, archers not, yeah not really technically yeah. sentinels can do more damage with because they have it's complicated but they can do a little bit more damage and again, they are Lothlorien units, yeah. so you have to be Lothlorien usually to use them, unless you some special way of getting them, like in the Kingdoms game. All right. Yeah. So what do you think then? What are we dropping meta. in there? Meta. I think meta. Okay. I don't really. It's you okay. Don't think if they they're nerf. Yeah. I think it's because they're still hard to get and they're expensive. So I think yeah. there's a little bit of a, a. I think it's still balanced there that way. Um. Mm -hmm. So now let's talk about. Now, oh, you know what? This might have been what was confusing me previously with the Dunedain. 
Aren't these range units or are they melee too? Yeah, those are ranged units, yeah. That's what's confusing me. All right, there's the <laughs> other. That's why I was so confused a little while ago with the Duna Dave. Yeah, those these are the ones of the north. are the Rangers of the North, which yeah. are the which Dunedain, are, right? Which is a little bit of a the ranged Dunedain version, and the other one's the melee. Exactly, version, basically. but I think that that is I just hopping back my brain. I just realized what that's why I was getting so confused. Yeah. I thought it was just the arrows on their back, but I'm like, there's another reason. This is why, oh, okay. because the Rangers are the Dunedain of the north the rangers of the north that's what they yeah. are that's their full title like when you read the stories so they just took two titles and had fun mixing two groups of units out of it mm -hmm. which is fine for the game all right so what do you think about them i think they're pretty good <laughs> i need i don't know their abilities off the top of my head so i haven't <laughs> used them in three years <laughs> i just remember that i Are used them and i thought they were very good or something yeah, and I used them once or twice like three seasons ago, and I was like, oh, these guys are pretty strong. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you played Arnor, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. They're So they're interesting. They're like swan knights for ranged units. Yeah. Because yeah, I remember they, people would stack But up. they take all damage, right? It's not for the first three yeah. rounds. And they're pretty tanky compared to other ranged units, though not anywhere near as tanky as most melee units. Yeah, yeah. Um... What other two abilities do you remember? Because I don't have it here to show them on the screen. Uh, one is that they take um, damage on behalf of of other range units, and the other one I think oh, is that they wow. have um, is it stun immunity two or is it? They yeah, I think they might have indomitable. The one that absorbs damage is gives them defense too it says they have oh you know what they might have the evasion one because it's got the double sword and then the like guy running isn't that the evasion one from it, the other or it sometimes might they be, but i don't they use the same icon for different things so. which they shouldn't do rise to war Unfortunately, they really shouldn't do that Let's i just realized that i don't really know what that second one does and i don't know if i have a way to we're over here being fearless pioneers and to look that up I'm trying to see if I don't have the elf to even look for you with the other one. Um, I could bring I have, up. The, I did, we don't have access to them in this season at all. No, they're not on the map. Yeah, are they not even in um, Arnor? They, no, they they're should not. be in Arnor. No, they're not. Oh yeah, you're right. That's just a bunch of dull swan knights. <laughs> a bunch of dull swan knights. <laughs> oh wait, nope, that's Dune Day. Okay. Yep, that is interesting. That would be really, really crazy to pair them with, with all Swan Knights. That might be why. Yeah. <laughs> They're maybe. like, we take all well, the arrow damage. Yeah. We take all the melee. And then you just have a third group of some other kind of like keepers or something. And it's just, you cannot get to the keepers. Yeah. That'd be yeah. funny. Anyways. Um, let me look real quick. I think I could tell you what their effect is. All right. And then we're going to talk about the iron guard all right here we'll do a little this is worth list. waiting one second for right yeah yeah i can make them wait a half second ready all right we got it we're on. okay so one of the effects is 10 percent bonus damage and minus 10 percent damage received when battling on non-structured land Oh, okay. So not on a building, right? Okay, they're good and in the wild. The other that makes one sense. is defense plus twenty when maxed, and it absorbs attacks against ally range unit. Ooh. Okay, so it's kind of like the Dolan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah one basically. Like, like <laughs> what I was saying. I mean, I knew it did that. I just didn't know about the ten percent damage increase, ten percent damage reduction, because it's on really non-structured land. So it's like a little bit situational. But if you're playing offensively, like out in the open fields and not like to attack a keep or something yeah that's going to be quite a bit useful i i would vote fine probably right i mean if you're playing arnor it's probably one of your best options if you're in the game where you're a faction right and obviously we can't even use that unit in the game that we're playing right now so yeah i don't know how that lines up with our rating here because I, like, they, I mean, they might be amazing in scenario, certain scenarios, but... <laughs> Personally, I feel like they are situational only. Oh, almost like the do it today. <laughs> almost like their counterparts. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I agree. obviously for completely different reasons, but... Yes. I think they're situational only. I don't really want to give them... I don't think they need a buff. 
Uh, cause what they do no. is unique and cool. Kind of like what I said about the heralds, like what they do yeah. with the counterattacking is unique and cool. Uh, but it's only really good on specific commanders and specific compositions. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you kind of want to use them as Swan Knights, but in an all ranged composition because they don't yeah. block for other melee units. So, you know, you could yeah. have them as a second line of defense where you have, you know, cataphracts in the front and then you have, uh, these guys, the Rangers of the North, and then like, uh, some sentinels, which yes. will actually dish out more damage. Right. Yeah. And like, that'd be a pretty good unit composition and it would work pretty good on, uh, commanders that use like half elven um or have nobility so like for example i think this this unit would be particularly good on arwen um she's really good at at uh mitigating damage giving damage to yeah. the men so yeah i think that'd be a pretty good but very that feels very situational right. to me and i don't even think if you're arnor you're going to be using them just because you have them i think you're going to want to find a commander that uses them well yes and build gear towards them being they're, useful as well. They're not going to be the same as like March Wardens, where they're just yeah. kind of going to be good within themselves with really any build. Because mm -hmm. March Wardens are just so good in general. Okay. I like it. That's good. Alright. Let's uh, let's uh, do the Iron Warriors. Alright, we may have a difference of opinion on the Iron <laughs> Warriors. How could you? Why don't you no, say your kidding. opinion? I, I think we All might right. have a similar opinion. Alright. Um, I think personally from what i've seen with the iron warriors i think i could find some and just click on them here in the in the wild should be able to do that uh well i thought they would be you know maybe i need to go to dale that might uh iron warriors there we go okay so can i get a oh i was kind of hoping i could just click on them here and look at them but it's not gonna let me is it oh well um so the iron warriors are really really good because i, I enjoy the fact that they're um they're a lot like they're basically like upgrades of guardians, except except they do not have the fire resistance, but they do take reduced damage from. <coughs> What's the other thing they take reduced damage from, Jethros? It's the. Um, uh, they take fifteen percent reduced physical damage. Physical damage too, and that's on top of um, their other. They have uh, a lot of armor. Their other thing is they do more damage armor. to melee units. To melee units, yeah. So they actually, they're kind of like a super guardian. They have better defense. They have better health. They're natural stats I'm talking about. And they also do more damage. So they're all around. Oh, well, you have them right there. Perfect. Um, so, yeah. Against melees, plus 20% damage. That's so good. And then damage received, negative 15. So, like, physical damage, received. physical damage reduced. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's a little bit... Um, worse than the guardian to an extent but i mean the guardian has um it's a 50 percent chance though they get a hundred percent chance to always take re reduce 15 percent right. all physical damage like that's really good and then the differences in stats is that can basically is they've got double the hp or a uh, well actually well, to be fair their unit is only 50 group guardians group is 100 so i guess you have to do the d division there but uh, yep. it's 84 health for a group of 50 with the Iron Warriors, where it's 40 for a group of 100 Guardians. And their defense is about 15 more. Um, their speed is actually a tiny bit slower. But again, their attack is amazing. It's 30 to 34 base instead of like Guardians with 7 to 20. So that's really actually really high. They do have a long conscript, though, and they're really expensive. So the, and, and their siege is actually pretty is slightly better than the Guardian, too. Because um, the siege is uh, two more than that. So, again, it's a little bit situational with the fact that they're kind of like the same thing with Guardians, except they don't. Have, they're more consistent on they'll put out more damage. They'll be able to take a little bit better average damage, right? Because it's not a percent chance. But fire damage will hurt them, right? More than a, a Guardian, you know, would get hurt. So, and they're expensive. So, it really does... I don't know. When I talk about it right now, I'm almost thinking more it's like either a B or a C for me, almost. But um, it's funny because so many people like to just use them as frontliners. Because for mm -hmm. the last four seasons, everyone to, everyone wants to play Erebor because they just want that unit in the front line. Because it's kind of like a Dol Amroth Knight, except Dol Amroth has the awesome taunt. But um, I'm pretty sure from my experience of using both, the Iron Gar uh, Warriors do far more damage. Like they're very consistent yeah. with doing a lot more damage than them. And they're basically, 
they're pretty much just as tanky because our uh, so Dolamroth knights have 66 armor normally and plus 100 for that first three rounds right where iron warriors have 116 armor off the bat right and they have right. yeah so they're a little bit more consistent which is why a yep. lot of people just like to use them as a super front line when they have like your warriors like gimli or dwalin or like again i play a lot of those characters heroes so i like them a lot but from an all situation point of view my overall thoughts would definitely be they fall somewhere in the middle three categories of what we're we're picking here in the, in the three but what do you think jethros I, I think yeah i mean i think they're meta i just think when you yeah. have them you got you're gonna use them and you're gonna use them a lot yeah uh, because they're, they're just, really good tanks their base they, stats are amazing even without their, their abilities base stats are, are pretty darn good and they do do extra bonus damage to melee units which helps with the fact that they're a frontline unit because most of the time you're definitely going to be hitting a melee they're, unit yeah your melee unit so and they're a little bit better at eating so through uh enemy defenses in the sense that they they're going to help ding out a little extra damage against their tanks um yeah. however you know their, their shortcoming is that they don't have that taunt mechanic and so and because slow. they don't take damage on behalf of allies you know it's not as reliable but that's fine if you use a mixture of iron warriors and uh you use yeah. the ram riders because then yeah. they're going to do extra damage themselves from the the armor reduction and they're going to be tanky and they'll you know take most of the damage and then what you're going to do is you're going to use a lot of commanders that are damage dealers with these guys um but if you don't that's fine you just throw a few of them and you have something in the back line and like i said when there's the melees in the front usually the range don't get targeted until they get wiped out first and so yeah. um it's pretty good but they're, they're I, really slow you got to be patient with these guys i thought we were gonna uh, battle over this jethros <laughs> <laughs> how so, dare you they're the best yeah, i no, don't I'm know just kidding i think i'm kidding i think, they're, they're, I think meta know, is the right pick they that's what i deserve would to be better than the uh you know where we the put guardians. in the here for the guardians and they're but they don't they don't need a nerf no i think no. maybe some people might feel that way but i think it's a fair trade-off that they're, they're consistently lot. tanky across the entire of all the rounds and you're better for it because you could throw in instead of just doing a command of like let's say you know like i told you before throwing like 500 or 750 swan knights with these guys you don't feel bad about putting in 1500 of them and yeah. watching them do a decent amount of damage and lasting for an extra four for yeah. like you know an extra two or three rounds and a lot of so, the people you put them with work well with them because a lot of dwarf upgrades right the fire resistance from Balin or right dwalin or ori um is really good with them or falgan would probably be very good with them i have yet to use them with falgan but obviously he gives massive buffs to his units so you might actually be able to do a one stack of these with falgan because he has the thing that helps them do more and stuff mm -hmm. and protect so they might be able to do enough damage and win a fight if you also make falgan a partial damage dealer because of durin's blood so not necessarily yeah. but it might be a fun thing to experiment now i'm thinking about it out loud yeah. um and well, then of course too, if you use great for Dwalin, gimli or dane if you use dwalin or or ballin you can get the minus 50 percent fire damage yes. reduction and yeah. you can put on the focus protection protection yeah and then they're basically tanky against everything from just items and a skill so now you can do whatever you want with the rest and they're yeah. super super tanky so yeah um they have plenty of health definitely I mean, that's nothing to scoff at yeah i think we i think so we concur on the meta so okay. i definitely they're just like march wardens they're just very very good now mm -hmm. i almost think march wardens from a um perspective of um utility are better obviously because they have pursuit and stun immunity right. naturally built in but uh again the base stats on those iron warriors are pretty dang good so and again usually the way you're using them is what makes them good right <laughs> And yeah. they're good on everyone as a front line, usually. Right. Pretty much any commander can use them decently. So, all right. So here's another, here's the last two we're going to hit up here is the um, long shot, right? And the yeah. Marshall. So the long shot tier four, this is the Linden unit. I do not know much about. So you're going to have to take this one, Jethros, because I've, I've used the Marshall, right. but I have not so used, I've been Linden. Long shots have the same keen eye ability that. Okay attacks with pursuit 
and they also okay. have the ability to do a triple attack i think it is on round they do a triple attack on round one one is it one four seven and nine or something like that um, it's but they don't attack on any other rounds yeah it's yeah they have like a they they have like these weird um bursts of damage i remember yeah. that too i'm gonna look if i can find them here on um units again they might not show them because they're not in this game mode yeah they don't show them it's kind of weird it seems like a glitch um <laughs> yeah i thought I, I thought i would look just in case um yeah so, they're they seem like i don't know i've never you, seen when you them read them you're like oh that's really cool they must be really good with certain strategies because they, they do extra damage on like certain on certain rounds but they they just the thing is, is you can miss out on so much damage from not getting to that ninth round. You know, they're yeah. really good if you win a fight on the round that they hit, <laughs> because whenever they hit on their round, they they're they're in, on average dealing out more damage than other units. But because it's every third round instead of every other round, mm -hmm. it feels like you can sometimes be missing out on damage for two rounds and then they're dead. Yeah. And you didn't get that last hit in. So um, I think they're they're super situational, and I think that if they if they got a buff, that they would be a lot more versatile and used more yeah. regularly in the meta. Yeah, and I saw I fought Linden a lot when we were Arnor last season, and I fought him a lot, and I never had a fight where I was like, "Dang, they destroyed me!" And yeah. I never had that with those units in the enemy army. And in fact, I didn't see many people running the unit at all. They were running yep. other builds. I remember so, that. So, so I was like, well, we were all using um, Rangers of the North, right? Because mm -hmm. they're they're a good unit against range, and that's probably why too. Because if you think about it from from a geographic point of view in the game, uh -huh. it's they're right next to each other. Literally, Arnor's unit counters long shots, right? Like it literally counters them because they'll take the damage, you know, that kind of stuff, and they take reduced damage from range. So, yeah, I. I don't know. Do they need a buff? I think they. Need <laughs> what do a you buff. think? I, th I think yeah. they should change it to where they do a double shot, um, every other e round. Ev yeah, every other Instead round. Instead of doing a triple shot every third round or whatever it is. And maybe like if it hits the same target, it increases by twenty percent damage or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like <laughs> like double arrows. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I would agree I with think that. It could benefit and be more useful. The thing is, the only the only time where I know for sure they're very strong is on Kirdan, which is a tier three, and it's the only tier three, yeah, that can really benefit uh, and that has yeah. synergy with it. And so, and that's an expense, and he's a newer tier three, so people mm -hmm. haven't had time to like, if you're more free to play, earning points for him. Yeah, like people, it's all gonna be people who spent tons and tons of money, even more than us. No. <laughs> and we have it like, <laughs> I mean, it's funny because people call me a whale sometimes, even though I put all this work into Gimli. And I'm like, no, I'm a dolphin, which is why I joke. Because it's like, <laughs> yes, I have put in, you know, some money in this game. And I'm, I'm stronger because I enjoy the game. But there are people who have spent 20 times what me and Jethro have spent on this game. And have, you know, five commanders, all max rank, all with gold, full armor. And it's like, holy moly. Like, my yeah. main character doesn't even have full upgraded gold armor, right? Like, I just, like upgraded my chess piece to the fourth level and it has no refines in it right and that's my best chess piece in the game so again a lot of it's just luck getting the stuff too but um all right so we decided they need a buff so i, I move them into the buff and let's finish up this last one marshals all right how you do it all right so the marshal i think the marshal is pretty cool i think do i have the marshal here that i can show them i think i might have it if not do you have one that i can see Oh, sure. I'll stats. just put it up for you real quick. Yeah. Because uh, I have never um, hired any, so I don't think I have them. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah. I um, bewitched some, so. Yeah. So that I could be. All right. So the Marshall unit, I think, is a strong unit. Um, he, they have the um, mounted combat, right? So they take 10% reduced damage and or mounted or whatever it's called. And then what's the other one? It's, it's very similar to. Okay. So this one is very interesting. So this is very similar to the the um, Rohirrim. What are they? Cal? Ugh, can't think of their name right now. I'm getting tired. 
Cavaliers. Uh, my brain. Cavaliers, yes. It's a little bit similar, so it's damage. It's a big damage increase, and um, it's affected by the speed stat, which is really cool. So that means if your commander has a lot of speed on their gear and it's stuff. based on the, com the speed of the unit, actually. Yeah, the, oh, excuse me, of the unit. So, yeah, if you're upgrading gear that gives speed to your units, that's kind of cool. So, um, but it gets worse every hit, right? By one third every round. Yep. Right. Yeah. So it's every one, every, it goes down a third of increase, but it's pretty good. It's 56% at level 10. And then, um, so it's definitely a lot better than the Cavaliers already off the bat. And not to mention their base stats. Now, when it comes down to money, um, they're pretty expensive. They take a long time to recruit 25 minutes for uh, I mean, one recruit. If you're Rohan, this will go down to about 14. Yeah. yeah, that's true. It's still high, though, when you have fully upgraded. Um, and honestly, their damage... I mean, 34 to 40 versus uh, Cavaliers. My Cavaliers say they're 34 to 42. Right. Is that, is that correct? Do they literally yeah. have less damage? Yes, they have less max damage. Yeah. Okay, but their speed is like 15 more, which is good because they base their increase, and I think that's the reason because of that multiplier from the speed stat. Right. So that's why their speed is so high, to make that stronger. They do have better HP and better defense. Um, they're really fast. So again, when you have someone like Theoden or some certain horse commander leader, they can really buff their stats, give them more speed. Um, they can be very, very powerful. They're definitely better than Cavaliers, but I don't know, Jethro's. I feel like they're kind of situational still. I don't know what you think. I almost, I don't know. They almost seem like compared to some of the other tier four units, I feel like they could be stronger. I, yep. Is that what um, you feel? I, Cause that's what I've always felt when them I used them. Is that they do not do as much damage, <laughs> extra bonus damage as I would like to be useful on anyone other than Theoden, Aomer and a uh, Eowyn, right. Yeah. So the interesting thing is that if you guys remember the um, Rohirrim title gives extra damage, it stacks up every time you hit. So while this starts stack going down after three hits, by the time that's done, it'll be stacked back up. So it oh, kind of makes it strong okay. across from the start. It's like having Rohirrim stacked up on the first round. But this is actually even more damage than that because it's modified by the might and this goes up to 56 where that stacks up a little differently and that's based on the commander might. Now, wait, and Ro... Oh, wait, no, uh, speed, right? Rohirrim is... Commander speed, yeah. Yeah, it's based yeah, on the okay. Commander speed. So, okay, so that matters then. So if you have gear, I almost feel like maybe they should have Onslaught should be buffed to do more at the beginning. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, so I mean, when it cuts really, every really time, really it's... Interesting. It could do more and it would be fine because... The reason why this feels bad is because honestly there's a lot of things in the game that reduce early round damage mm -hmm. um for the first few hits like um i don't know like uh white council for example yep will reduce the first few hits by a good chunk and so it kind of feels like this barely makes up for a lot of resistance because it's not consistent enough mm -hmm. it, they need to make a way where this um actually what I think would be even kind of cool is if they had a second instance of damage mm -hmm. where you could call it like a, you know, like a, like a ride by attack where they like turn around and come back and they hit a second time. Oh but yeah. Each hit, the second hit does 50% damage. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here's why this is really a cool idea is because if they hit with a base attack, um, and then they come back and hit again. It stacks up right here and faster because it's a separate hit. And oh. also it has a second trigger of mounted combat. So it would keep their wanting to be played with the the Rohan heroes. It would make them really good but. with who they're meant to who they're meant to be used on. And then it would also be pretty good for things that get bonus from extra hits. Like, mm. for example, ally, the skill tree that does extra mm, um, healing yeah. for chance to heal when you hit. It would yes. trigger that more. And what they could do is they could reduce it the first time it just drops down. The first time it hits, it's 50%, then like 40, 30, 20, 10, and then it's gone. But yeah. the, in the early rounds, you have extra instances of damage to potentially 
trigger those types of things. Healing, stacking things faster, mm -hmm. yeah. So then it would make them feel more like a tier four because honestly, from when I used them two seasons ago, because we did play Rohan one season, right. I forget which one, um, I felt like when I used them, they were really expensive and I didn't feel like I was getting this massive increase. Uh, yeah, I felt like they don't to... really increase your damage very much at all. Yeah, I mean, what if they made Onslaught stack from your, your commander's speed? You think that it would be too strong? Um, instead of like, I mean, I like your idea with the the whole skill thing, like coming back. But right. if they were gonna update their skill, you know what I mean, for to make it yeah. better. Yeah, I mean that'd be, I mean, it'd be, I don't think that would really make that much of a difference because probably the percentage, I don't know exactly what it is, but the effect that, mo that it's modified now is probably not that high. And changing it to commander, I mean, a commander at best is gonna have like almost 250 speed most of the time yeah um unless you have gear like on a on an aomer that just gives a massive speed to get over the 300 mark you know you're not really going to yeah. see that effect modified yeah make a big difference so yeah um yeah. It, i i haven't really tested it where i had gear that gets the speed really high so i shouldn't presume too much but just in my testing it didn't really seem like it brought that 50% mm -hmm. up to like a hundred. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. If it did, then we might have a different conversation, but just increasing it by another 10 or 15, it's barely, barely yeah. beneficial. And and it doesn't really feel great to, to get your unit speed increased because it doesn't usually help damage in any other aspect of the fight. It just so you're helps- you're just one upgrading percent. there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, so, then, um, yeah. what do you, what would you be your judgment then your call on it? Cause I sit somewhere, probably their situational or needs a buff, but honestly, since they're a tier four unit and I really don't see them used super much, even with people playing Rohan when, when it was like, we we're playing the faction games, I don't see anyone using it during this Kings of men and they're all over the place. Yeah, like, I don't see anyone well, giving I mean, me a I have using 2,897 of them sitting here, and I instantly stopped using them. Yeah, I should probably just delete them. Like, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> because I'm not using so them in your opinion, on... then you think they need a buff? And I, I think I feel I like they're not used enough. So, uh, well, here's why they're also good: is they're another men unit that's melee. So, like, they are really True. good on specifically on on uh, Aowen. Yeah specifically yeah so yeah they so maybe situational only yeah and that's the best i could say with them and they barely make a difference between them and, and cavaliers so i'm almost wanting to say that they're fine but there are better options just because cavaliers are more cost effective because they're not even yeah. that much pinkier yeah they yeah. have a little more like eight more armor or something mm -hmm. so. well hmm it's a hard one then it's a hard one I mean, you guys leave your comments too for us later because we'd like to know. Again, that's why I had timestamps because it was a long video. But yeah. um, this is a hard one. Again, too, me and Jeff have played a lot. We've played a lot of seasons now. But again, we haven't played every single thing. That's what makes the game fun. It has lots of options. Um, and again, these aren't in stone. Me and Jethro's, <laughs> these are just our generic, as we conversation, things can be updated, things can be changed. We could change our minds on things, obviously. So, but definitely leave your comments below and see what you guys think too. Um, I think then maybe we'll drop this guy in situational. What do you think? Yeah, that's fair. Because I, I don't, don't think, really, I don't, I, I don't, think they, the reason I, I would say you don't need a buff. You just need a, they need a small rework. So they're what they do. A little is bit. Yeah. Unique and more unique even. Yeah. Before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, just a little bit more like, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Well, I think we're, uh, we, we're not kicking a dead horse, meaning the marshals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll move on. So you guys, leave your comments. There's our little tier list up here above us. Ta-da! Um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, we're going to definitely do neutral units in the future and evil units. Um Again, me and Jethros have not played Evil Side as much, so we've been practicing in the games that allow us to use evil units, which we can use evil units right now. So we've been doing different combos and stuff. Um, hint, hint. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Alchemists are a little strong right now. Uh, <laughs> but everyone agrees. I don't think anyone disagrees yeah, on that. Yeah, we're going to put that on the tier list. I wonder what that's going to be. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure most uh, we got, we're going to have a 95% agreeal on both sides of the spectrum on that one. Um, yeah. 
anyway, my friends, thanks so much for joining us. I got a quick little shout out here and thank you to my Patreons right, right over there for their support. And uh, my light is dying that I gave Jethro, so now he's having a party in his room. And <laughs> all right, you guys, you have a wonderful day in Middle Earth, and I'll see you all in the next episodes of Voice of the Rings. And don't forget to like and subscribe. The comments right up there. See you all in the next episodes of Voice of the Rings. All right, we're having way too much fun now. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs>